Grim Bliss here with a Witch Queen Impressions video with great new features Void 3.0, Weapon Crafting, Lucent Brood, Exotic, Sabathun's Throne Worlds, and my only complaints. Start off with uh, Void 3.0, we have Aspects and Fragments. The Titan gets uh, Controlled Demolition, which hits with Void Abilities or Volatile, spreads it. Bastion creates a barrier that gives allies an overshield. Offensive bulwark, your grenades charge faster when you're in when you have an overshield or are standing in a ward of dawn also gives an extra shield throw. Hunters get Trapper's Ambush, which is a shattered dive that causes weaken and invis to you and your allies. Banishing step, dodging makes hunters invisible during any supers. Stylus Executioner, killing anyone suffering from a Void debuff makes you invisible with True Sight, and your next melee has Weaken. Warlock gets Chaos Accelerant, overcharging your grenade. Magnetic ones become the handheld Supernova. Feed the Void, kills with Void, trigger Devour. And then Child of the Old Gods, summon a Void Soul. When you target an enemy, it moves to them and drains their health. Next, we have Fragments. Echo of Exchange, Melee Final Blows, Grant Grenade Energy. Echo of Remnants, Lingering Grenades have increased duration. Echo of Reprisal, Final Blows while surrounded, Grant Super Energy. Echo of Expulsion. Void ability kills cause enemies to explode and it carries an intellect bonus. Echo of provision. Damaging enemies with grenades grant melee energy and has a strength stat penalty. Echo of undermining. Void grenades weaken enemies. It has a discipline penalty. Echo of domineering. After suppressing a target, gain increased mobility for a short duration and reloads current, reloads current weapons. And it has a discipline bonus. Next, we have Void 3.0 Verbs, things that the uh, development team wanted us to start to learn for this one. Suppress, targets can't activate any ability or movement modes and are disoriented. Weaken, target takes increased damage, has slow movement, and is disoriented. Volatile, target will explode in a void detonation. Invisibility, player vanishes from sight and radar. Devour. Players immediately restored to full health from any source. Grenade energy is gained. And an overshield, player gains a protective barrier. Next, we have the weapon crafting system, where we will see our first ever primary fusion rifle in the name Deliverance. We will see enhanced perks if you level up the weapons. They will show a date for when the weapon is created, which will be a neat feature for the years going forward. We have the Glaives, which have great functionality. Unlimited melee from what it looks like, ranged fire with its uh, ability to shoot, and a blocking shield when you hold the left trigger. And they have some sort of a tie-in to Sabathun to create our initial one, which will be interesting, and I do like that. There are no crafting limits. The stats on our uh, characters are now uh, numbers instead of bars there's a thing for day one raiders land tank perk it's on certain weapons I need to relook at which ones it produces damage reduction on kill it's a good one for day one raiding and then there are deep sight resonance weapons they are red bordered on completing their attunement pro progress these weapons will reward crafting materials for the new crafting system, but when this happens, they don't get dismantled. In this section, we're going to talk about the Lucent Brood, who are hives that use the light. I like how they're like a fire team, because the Acolyte uses a blade barrage, the Wizard uses a storm color, and the Knight uses a sentinel, which is definitely going to change things going forward. And I do love the way it's going to change the way that we play in general. On to a very interesting topic of exotics. Edge of Action is a Titan Glaive that you can throw a smaller Ward of Dawn to a point on the field. Edge of Intent is a Warlock 
glaive, creating a rift to heal others, while Edge of Concurrence is a hunter glaive that creates a chain lightning effect. Other than that, we've got Grand Overture, Become the Colossus, with this mini rocket launcher. Parasite, a hive warm grenade launcher. Osteostriga, similar to a weapon of sorrow, its ammo homes in and explodes, spreading toxic. The Titans get a new chess piece called the Hoarfrost Z. Your barrier becomes a glacial wall. Warlocks get a new set of gloves called Ozeomancy, which is two cold snap grenades and increased homing. Hunters get a new helmet called the Blight Ranger. It deflects an Arc Strider to do increased damage. And there is another Warlock Legs called something to do with Devouring Rifts. Where it empowers, your Empowering Rift actually heals. Next I want to talk about Sabathrune's Throne World as a, as a whole. I love how the overall design does remind you of a painting. But I do like how the puzzles are leading to a conspiracy to solve. There is also a deep sight ability where there will be orbs that you have to investigate. Similar to the Tincture of Queensfoil from Dreaming City. But if you look at the video in general from the Vidoc, The view from the Swampland. Honestly I love how it does Swampland into a picturesque white castle. My only real complaints of what I've seen of Witch Queen is there was no increase to vault space, which a lot of people have been needing, and there was no increase to the stack of materials, but besides that, I'm just worried of the content being a future DCB victim, with the Point of Mars, Ikora Ray's conspiracy board, and the weapon crafting area kind of being a offshoot. This has been Grim Bliss. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you found, the found it entertaining, please come back and join us again for the next one.